Grade 8 Math, number 9.5c, identify another sequence of transformations. This is another part to the previous video for people who need a little more help. So we're going to go into more detail here. What sequence of transformations will transform figure B into C? So the green one, B, turned into C. So we have to figure out what happened to it. What transformations did it go through? Did it translate and slide? Did it reflect? Or did it rotate? Okay, so looking at this, you can see that this is the tall peak and this is the lower peak. It turned, didn't it? And this is counterclockwise. It's going the opposite of a clock. So it's been rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise with the origin 0, 0 as the center of rotation right here. Okay, now keep an open mind. What happened after that was the new image that rotated it was right here, and it slid up to and then over one to become C. So if we look at this and see how it rotated, this is the original position. This is the pre-image. It is uh, one unit away from this x-axis, isn't it? See how the line WX right here is just one unit away from the x-axis? Well, when it rotated 90 degrees, now it's going to be one unit away from the y-axis. and this point W was two units away from the y-axis. After it rotates 90 degrees, it's going to be two units away from the x-axis right here. See? So this is the rotation of 90 degrees counterclockwise. We still need it to go up and over so that it's up in this corner, don't we? See how it's like shoved up into the corner? So it's going to be translated. The new image slid up to and over to the right one. It went through a 90 degree counterclockwise rotation. Then it went through a translation up and a translation to the right. So it slid twice, didn't it? Okay, so remember that translating is sliding and rotating is spinning, okay? So the pre-image, B, the green image, had these for its coordinates, X and Y coordinates. Remember, that's X, that's Y, okay? So in order for us to rotate the figure 90 degrees counterclockwise at the origin, we need to multiply all the y values by a negative 1 and switch the x and y values. That's the rule. When we rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise, we multiply the y values by a negative 1 and switch the x and y values, okay? If you don't know what I'm talking about with these rules, you need to go back to 9.4a and watch all three of these videos, b and c also, okay? All right, so we've got to multiply all the y values by a negative 1 and then switch x and y. So the green ones are the y values. We need to multiply them by a negative 1. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. 1 times negative 1 is a negative 1. See how they flipped? These are both negative 3. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1, and we put the 2 here. That's the new y value because they switched places. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1, and we drop the x down in the opposite place. See, it switched. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4, and then the x drop down into the y's position and switch places. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, and the negative 4 drop down into the y's place. It switched places. Now, we've got it rotated into this position. We need to translate it up two units. And the rule to translate up two units is we add units to the y coordinates. The rule says, if we're going to go up, you have to add to the y coordinates, okay? That many units. So we're going to add two units. We're going to add two to all the y coordinates. Now we're going to base it off the rotated figure, not this one. That's gone, okay? So we're going to add two units to y based on these numbers, the new numbers we got from the rotated figure. So negative 3 plus 2 is a negative 1. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. Negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. And negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. Okay? So now we have them all translated up two units. And now our figure is going to be right here. But we're still not done. We still need to move it to the right one space so that it's butted up against this y axis. See? We still need to move it over one. So to translate right one unit, we add units to the x coordinates. To translate and go right, we add to the x coordinates that many units. 
okay? So because we're going to write one unit, we're going to add 1 to all the x ones, okay? So these underlined orange ones are going to be our new x values because we always use the image right before it, okay? We don't use those up here. Those are done. You only use the previous one. So negative 3 plus 1 is a negative 2. Negative 1 plus 1 is a 0. Negative 1 plus 1 is a 0. Negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. And now this line right here are our new coordinates, and we've moved this shape three times, a 90-degree counterclockwise rotation and two translations, two slides, and we got it to where it was supposed to be, and we did it algebraically. See? Now, it's really important that you know these notes. If you don't have these, you need to go and uh, you can either freeze the video right now and copy it. Or you can go back to these videos and watch them. Okay, it's really important you know those rules because you can't do this without those rules. It's imperative. Now, it's going to ask you in the book if the community property applies to translations and rotations, and it does not. Do you remember what the commutative property is? I did a vid couple of videos on this. Think of commuting to work and back or to school and back. You know how people say, oh, I, my commute to work was terrible, the traffic was terrible. Well, commuting is the going back and forth. So the commutative property is if you're at home and you go two miles and stop at a coffee house and then go three miles and you're at school, you've gone a total of five miles. When you go home, you're still going to go three miles and you can stop for coffee and then go another two miles and then you're home. And so the commutative property says it doesn't matter if you're going to or from, it's going to come up with the same answer. Well, that does not apply for translations and rotations. See? For translations and rotations, it does matter what direction they're going in. If we multiplied different uh, orders of these numbers, we wouldn't have had the same amounts, especially when we had to flip them, right? So... The commutative property does not apply in translations and rotations, okay? I hope this was helpful. We're getting through this. We're way past halfway on grade 8 math, and we're going to talk about the properties of dilations next. I know you've heard that your, the pupils in your eyes can dilate. Well, we can have dilations in math, too, okay? I'll see you next video. Bye.